This is the practical hands-on wiring that you would be doing if you were in school. Uh, here is the CoreSense Copeland uh, scroll compressor protector, protect, protection module. And you can see, um, just like the, the picture that we drew in the diagram, um, you can see where the, the T1, T2, M1, M2 terminals are. Uh, on the electrical trainer, I'm going to go ahead and wire one up so that you can see this is what you would have been doing had you um, been able to come to school and do this in person. So I'm going to use this switch here as the cooling control. I'm going to use this relay here as my control relay. So when you look at your diagram that you drew, the first thing you see is that L1 goes to the transformer. Here's power coming in, goes to the transformer. Here's the 24 volt terminals. So we're right here. I'm going to start with this wire right here. <clears throat> 24 volts to the cooling controller. This is the terminals for this switch. I'm going to take 24 volts here off of the switch. I'm going to go over to the coil of the control relay. When you look at these plug-in relays, you can see the vertical blades here versus the horizontal ones on top. The terminals right underneath the vertical blades are going to be the coil. So I'm going to go ahead and wire from the switch to the coil there. And then I'm going to take another wire and I'm going to go from the coil on the other side, which you could call the common side, is going to go to 24 volt common right here. And if I plug the relay back in, and I would have you go ahead and complete all your wiring before you uh, did any uh, testing or anything. But for now, you can see that if I turn the switch on and off, you'll see the, the relay is working there. So we know we got that part of it done. Uh, next thing in our drawing is to get 24 volt power to the module. Here is terminal T2, T1. Here's the wires that I've already got plugged in there. So I'll take this one and I'll hook it to the common 24 volt. This will go to the power 24 volt. So we've got that done. Now we've got all of our low voltage wiring done. We've got that one done. We've got this done. So now we'll start on our high voltage wiring coming from the power source to control relay. So I'll take this wire here. I'll connect it to the 120 volt source right there. Now on this control relay, now I'm gonna to wire to the contact, which actually the common contact is the very bottom screw terminal. It actually goes to this horizontal slot right there. And someday I will have to explain exactly how these plug-in sub-bases are made internally so that you can understand why I wired it there. When I come off the other side of the control relay contact, I'm going to go to M1 and I have a wire here on M1 and the normally open part of this plug-in relay is the top screw. So this is the bottom screw, that is the very top screw. And I can plug the relay back in. Now I've got it all wired up. Coming out of the controller, goes M1 to M2. This will go to the low pressure, high pressure switch, but actually I'm not gonna wire that. I'm gonna go directly to the contactor coil. Here is the contactor coil. And then to complete, I need to hook neutral to the opposite side of the contactor coil. Here is my white neutral. And that's going to go to my 120 volt neutral right here. So I've got everything wired so that we can pull in the contactor. I'll talk about the uh, temperature sensor and 
you see here is the three wires for the motor compressor terminals, but we're not going to be able to, to wire that here because we don't have three phase power. But if I uh, turn the power on, you'll see here the module power it up. The light turned green. I'll turn the You may have seen the red light start flashing. That's because I had the resistance for one of the sensors out of range and it actually went into fault. But I wanna go through how to um, test it now that I've got this potentiometer, which is tied to the uh, thermistor terminals. Now I can turn it on and off. You see the relay pulls in and you can also see this contactor pulls in. So I got a call for cooling, relay pulls in. The uh, core sense says, okay, go ahead and start the compressor. Now, here is my motor temperature sensor simulator. Once I turn it a little bit above halfway, because this is a 10,000 ohm potentiometer, you see that I didn't lose the call for cooling, but the contactor did drop out. So it shut off. Uh, you should see now you've got one flash on the red light. If you look at the code for that, that means the motor temperature was too high now. If I turn this down back below the resistance that it takes to get it to reset or restart, you see it didn't restart. If, if I let the video run for 30 minutes from right now, you would see that contactor pull back in because it takes 30 minutes for it to automatically go through and, and recycle, reset. But there is a way to um, bypass that 30, sec uh, that 30 minutes. That would be to power off, power it back on, let it go through the initialization. Uh, you, you probably should wait about 20 to 30 seconds. I actually just heard the click inside. That means that M1 to M2 closed. Our temperature is okay. Now, if I turn it on, control relay pulls in, contactor pulls in. Uh, again, if I simulate a temperature too high on the motor winding temperatures, motor winding sensor, it locks out, contactor drops out.